This is lesson three of unit one, graphs in the media. Why does the media use graphs? When graphs aren't misleading, they're actually super useful, whether it's in news articles, advertisements, or elsewhere. Graphs are nice because they're easy visual representations and they tell a story in one quick picture. Graphs capture your attention. So if it's in a news article, it captures our attention and makes us wanna read that story. Graphs explain the point very quickly and clearly, and it summarizes the whole idea well. In this lesson, we're going to go over a couple different graphs that have been found in the media, and we'll analyze them to see what story they're telling, whether or not they're misleading. So we'll start with looking at news articles. Um, this, I'm not sure what year it was from, but it's from the USA Today, and the article says seniors to more than double by year 2050. And then there's this, art, there's this picture, there's a senior citizen in a rocking chair and kind of a bar graph. And you can see that from 2004 to 2050, there's this huge jump in the number of seniors. So we have some questions on the side that we can discuss. And here are the solutions here. So what do you notice about this graphic? Well, I would say that it captures your attention with that photo. So even before you see the headline or the text, the first thing you see is it says grandma in the rocking chair and the graphic, so it captures your attention. What else do I notice? That this, the headline is kind of scary. Seniors to more than double by year 2050. It's not super clear what it means by that, and it sounds like a really big number. Like, are seniors gonna be taking over our country by 2050? How is this happening? So it makes me wanna read this story. And I guess that's question two. Does it make you wanna read the news article? Yes. It captures my eye, it captures my attention, and it makes me curious. And so that's probably why they made it this way, because they wanted us to read this news article. Could this graphic be considered misleading? Why or why not? I'd say yes for a couple of reasons. One, there's no scale. We see the two years and we see the two values, but there's no scale on the y-axis or really on the x-axis. So I don't know, does the scale start at zero? Is it going up by a consistent amount each time? It looks like there's a huge jump in 2050, but I'm not really sure if it's an accurate jump because there's no scale. There's also no explanation for this huge jump. All it says in the text is that seniors uh, make up about 12% of the population in 2004, they'll make up about 21% by 2050. There's no explanation of why this is the case. And so then it leads the reader to make assumptions about why this could be happening. So they're kind of um, excluding information, which can be misleading. So what other information should have been provided to explain this jump in the number of seniors? A couple things. One, baby boomers aging. Remember baby boomers, that's the generation that was born after World War II. So there was a bunch of babies born in that generation. And since that was in like the 50s and 60s, those people are now reaching senior citizen age. So that's a big reason why there's gonna be so many more seniors. That's not some uh, crazy thing that can't be explained. It's a very clear reason about why. So they put this headline in kind of a scary way when there's actually a pretty reasonable explanation for it. As well, just general population growth. There are more people being born every year, which means as time goes on, there's going to be more seniors every year. That's also excluded from this and it's very, a reasonable reason or explanation for this, uh, this stat. And then lastly, why do you think the newspaper chose to use this graphic? I would say because it captures your attention and it gets people to read the article and enjoy their newspaper or purchase their newspaper. Okay, this is the next one we're gonna look at and we could assume that this is an advertisement. So pretend that a company uses this graph in an advertisement. What type of drink do you think this company sells and why? look at the solutions. If this was an ad, I would guess that the company sells juice or soda. It definitely wouldn't be selling milk because if a company was selling milk, they would not want to show this graph because it looks like nobody wants to drink milk, but it does look like they want to drink juice and soda. So that's what I could assume. Question two, by showing this graphic in an ad, what do you think the company's goal was? Well, I would probably say to make it, it's, the goal is probably to make it look like juice and soda are super popular amongst students, way more so than milk and tea. Um, that's maybe the point that they're trying to get across to say like, hey, students prefer us, so you should buy us and sell us to your students. Uh, do you think this graphic is misleading? Why or why not? 
I would say yes, for sure, because again, there's no scale on the y-axis. We know that it represents the number of students. We, ha we have no idea how many. Is this just a, a survey of, of 20 different students and really it's not indicative of the entire population? Um, does the scale start at zero? Does the scale go up by a consistent amount? We don't know any of this information because there are no numbers on the scale. So we can't really be sure if this is accurate information or not. So what would be a better way to display this data? Have a scale on the y-axis so that we know. And also explain where this data comes from. Which students were surveyed to give this information? Are they a certain age? Are they from a certain location? Is there a reason they don't prefer milk as much as let's say juice or soda? More information would be helpful here. So when you see an advertisement that has a graph, you should always ask yourself these, these questions before you believe what it's trying to share. Here's a familiar looking graph, very recent. Uh, this is from February 5th, 2021, about the COVID cases in BC. This is from the government of British Columbia. So first question is, what is this graph displaying? Well, these are the daily COVID cases across Canada from August until now, and it's separated by all the different provinces. You can see on the y-axis, it says per 100K, so per 100,000 people. Um, and then in white is our BC that's highlighted with all the other uh, provinces in black. What message is the government trying to share with this graph? Well, the big words there, let's keep going. Um, I imagine, actually I'll put this slide up. I imagine that the message they're trying to share is we're making progress, your efforts are working and things will get better soon. This is trying to, like, I take this as a motivational tactic to say, I know things are hard, but look at our cases. They're going down and they're better than most of the rest of the country. Um, is this graph misleading or fair? I know I've been showing a lot of misleading graphs, but I would say this is a fair one um, because it's showing like the scale is there. All the information is given. The scale is going up by a consistent amount. The scale starts at zero. You could ask yourself, hey, well, is it fair to compare cases in BC versus Ontario? There's way more people in Ontario. So maybe that's not a fair comparison, but they take care of that because this is the cases per 100,000 people. So it takes that into, it takes that into account. Um, so even though like PEI, for example, has way less people in it than Ontario, this is still a valid comparison because it's the number of cases per 100,000 people. So yes, I would say this is a fair graph. And lastly, why is this graph helpful for citizens? I think it gives us motivation to keep following the COVID safety rules. It gives us hope that things might get better soon. Um, and it's clear information that's very quick to analyze. I found this by going through my Instagram feed and it's just a quick reminder that, hey, this is how we're doing compared to everyone else. Here's some updated information and here's some hope that like, you know, hopefully things will get better soon. So this is a great example of when graphs can be super helpful in the media because it summarizes the story in one simple way, it catches your eye and it explains things clearly. Next example. So this is kind of news slash politics related. And we have a graph here. Um, this is gun deaths in Florida. So that's what this graph is displaying. The number of murders committed using firearms from the 1990s to the 2010s in Florida. I'll go to the next slide. And you notice that what's highlighted is in 2005, it says Florida enacted its stand your ground law. If you're not familiar with what that is, the stand your ground law says that people can use deadly force when they reasonably believe it to be necessary to defend themselves. In other words, if someone's breaking into your house or you think that your life is threatened, you're allowed to shoot them or use deadly force against them. That was enacted in 2005. And then we can see how the uh, gun deaths have changed. So based on this visual, what conclusion do you draw from this graph? Before you look at anything else, um, what I would say is that gun deaths look like they're going up, but in 2005, when the stand your ground law was enacted, it shoots right down. So my initial reaction is that based on this visual, it looks like that stand your ground law has been a great thing to implement because the cases have gone down, or not cases, the gun deaths have gone down. But why is this graph misleading? If you look closely, the y-axis has been flipped upside down. Instead of going from zero up to 800, it's going the other way. So this, this graph is completely upside down and actually deaths have gone up 
since the standard ground law has been enacted. So in 2005, they were around 500. And then the next big jump down was over 800. So it's actually a super misleading graph because it's literally been flipped upside down. So why do you think this graph was published? What motive did they have? What story were they trying to tell? Well, I would say somebody, whoever made this, was possibly pushing a political agenda. They were trying to keep guns legal. They were trying to justify the stand for ground law. So they manipulated the data and showed it in a misleading way to get their story or their point of view across. What, last question is, why is it important to know how to spot misleading graphs? It's super important so you can stay an informed citizen and an informed voter. And here's the last one we'll go over related to climate change. So what is this graph displaying? Um, this is the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere from today back 800,000 years. So it's over many, many, many years, starting 800,000 years ago, all the way up till now. And you can see all the different uh, carbon dioxide levels over that time. So what you'll notice, actually, maybe we'll go back. What you'll notice in 1950, it just started, it got to a high level and then it's just been shooting up at a crazy level. So over all that time, it was fairly consistent. And now it's way, way above and just keeps going in that direction. So what message is this graph sharing about climate change? It's sharing that CO2 levels are dangerously high and continuing to increase. We need to do something to backtrack it. How does this graph make you feel? Well, that's a personal question, but I would say it makes me feel scared, maybe a bit sad, and it makes me feel motivated to help. Because if the world has been pretty good, carbon dioxide wise, for 800,000 years, and just in the last couple decades, we've gone so horribly wrong. It's a scary, sad thing, but also it makes me feel like we need to do something to fix this. Why are graphs a useful tool to help fix climate change? This is a super clear graphic that shares a very important message that can inspire action. It's very like clear where the problem is, when it happened. It kind of is a, another proof that climate change is real. So if someone wasn't sure about that for whatever reason they could look at this graph and maybe be convinced that some change needs to happen um, but it's a good way to summarize an important um, an important thing in a visual easy to read way so these are just some examples of different graphs in the media you can see there's lots of different reasons to have graphs sometimes they're misleading sometimes they're super helpful but it's important to be able to analyze them and uh, understand what story they're trying to tell